Hey there guys and girls, this is MTG Degree, my name is Luke, and today we're going to do the beginning of a series about cheating. This first topic is mana weaving, and the concept here is to take all of your lands and all of your spells and put them together in such a way that you never get mana flooded or mana screwed. Now this of course gives you a giant edge and also is extremely easy to do. Luckily, there are some ways to detect this and punish your opponent, and uh, that's what we're gonna go over today. So I've got two techniques. One of them is the dumbest thing somebody could do against you, and you kinda see this sort of thing at FNMs. And then the other one is a little bit more devious, and is something that will actually show up at GPs and whatnot, and I want you guys to be prepared for. So I'm gonna show you the countermeasures for those two things right now. Disclaimer time. In order to teach you guys how to beat cheating, I need to show you what the cheaters are doing. However, don't use these techniques in a game of magic. It's very unwise, you'll be caught and it's not worth it. But we are gonna go over how the people are cheating in the first place so that you can counteract it. Okay, the first mana trick that we're going to try to defeat here is a really stupid one. But just because a cheat is stupid doesn't mean someone's not going to try it against you, right? I've seen this one myself at some FNMs, and it's very simple. All it is, they take all their spells, they put them in one pile, they take all their lands, they put them in another pile. And before the match, they do this stupid thing, right? And <clears throat> they'll say, you know when they sit down to their match. Oh, I went to time last time, so let's, I just pre-shuffled a lot or whatever. You know, their opponent can tell them to shuffle, but hey, why not try this, right? Is what they're thinking. Well, I've got a great reason why they should not try this. Okay, so your opponent, has presented you with this deck. And I've seen people blatantly do this on the sidelines of FMs and whatnot. It's a dumb, it's a dumb cheat, so I don't think anyone's gonna try it at a GP or anything. However, there's a great way for you to defeat this, and it is so simple. So you can either call a judge or don't call a judge. But when they give you the deck for rec for uh, for randomization, this is what you do. You just do four piles like this. Okay, then it looks like, you know, just being a shuffler or whatever. Um, but remember, these are every other, so something quite special happens with these piles. So look, all spells. So look, all spells. So what you do is, is then you just take opposite piles and you put them together. Now here's where the judge or not judge part comes in, which is that if you do give this to your opponent, they're just gonna have to mulligan, right? But in my opinion, you should probably call a judge before showing them that you can say here, this is the deck they gave me. You do the four pile shuffle, you say, doing a pile shuffle does not increase randomness or decrease randomness, right? It just changes the patterning within the deck. And after doing that and handing it to the judge, they'll see this thing is half and half. So obviously the person handed you a patterned deck. Now that is a very simple one and uh, you are 100% proving that they were cheating. So this is absolutely a DQ scenario. Okay, now while our first shuffle was a little bit silly, this second one is a lot harder to detect and is one that you're actually more likely to see at a higher level event. And so it starts the same way. You take those lands and those spells and you stack them on top of each other. Then your opponent will do something like this. They'll make five piles. It doesn't really matter the geometry, but they'll make five piles like this. 
And the thing about this is that it really looks like some acrobatics are occurring, you know? So it's really quite convincing to many new players or people who haven't seen it before. So they'll take those piles and they'll put them all on top of each other. And just for the sake of knowledge, let's take a look at what that looks like. Now this is a somewhat land light deck, but you'll see you get many spells, and then many lands, and then many spells, and then many lands, and so on and so forth. Then they just repeat the process. So they get quite the amount of shuffling action here. Now this trick is old as the hills, right? But don't let that fool you. Just because something is old as the hills doesn't mean that it doesn't work on new people. It's not still used. And it's also quite effective. And here's why, is because when someone picks up this deck, it doesn't look that crazy. There's some little clumps of spells, you know, to, every once in a while there'll be two spells in a row and such. But the thing that's important to notice is how any seven of this looks very keepable. So, for example, here. That's keep. Let's take a look at the next seven. Oh, well, that's keep, isn't it? Let's take a look at the next seven. Well, that looks like a keeper. So you can see what I'm getting at here. Now you could pick up this deck when your opponent does this to you and just shuffle it yourself. And the thing is, is that such a highly ordered space has been caused here that in order for it to become random again, you have to shuffle it about 20 times, which is another thing. Even if an opponent that doesn't know that picks it up and decides to do a bit of shuffling because there's too much pile shuffling going on, they probably don't know that they need to do it about 20 times for it to be random again. There's still a good amount of order, even if this is shuffled five times or so. But we don't want to just pick it up. We want to get the person DQ'd. So call over a judge and you can tell the judge, I'm gonna do some pile shuffling. As you know, pile shuffling doesn't increase or decrease randomness. And what you'll do is you'll just say, okay, this is 60 card deck, five piles, 12 cards per pile. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. One, two, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Okay? And what we're doing here is deconstructing, okay? So now we're gonna do the opposite. We're gonna pick them up and put them on the bottom. Now this looks a little funky, but you're still not looking at your opponent's cards. We still haven't seen any of them. And so there's no reason why this is not allowed. So feel free to do it. And this is really quite exciting, isn't it? However, don't worry about wasting time because you're not gonna play your matches anyway. Whoop, that didn't go quite on the bottom. Now at this point, if your opponent isn't sweating, then they're not understanding that you're deconstructing the shuffle. 
All right, let's do it again. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. And it did take me a while to figure out how to deconstruct the double nickel because it's a bit of a complex process. So it took me a while to come up with the idea of picking up the cards and putting them under and all that jazz. But even though there are other methods of detecting the double nickel, I wanted to make sure that what I gave you guys was super bulletproof and awesome. And that's what this is, so I kind of just invented this myself. And of course, it still has to follow the rules. So we can't be looking at anything. All right, getting close to the end here. All right, great. Now let's flip this right on over. Huh. Now that's very interesting, isn't it? Now all you did there was pile shuffle. You only did non-random activities. So if you do non-random activities to a random selection of cards, you'll get randomness out. If you do non-random activities to a non-random deck, then you will get something non-random out. And what we've done here is illustrate very clearly to the judges that this deck was completely stacked, lands on top of spells before the game started. So this should get your opponent immediately DQ'd and suspended and whatnot. Now the reason why we're doing this is because depending on the judge and all that sort of thing, the double nickel can be looking a little less suspicious when you're looking through it. It just looks kind of random. Most people are not going to notice, you know, the patterning involved. And so this method is a fantastic way to illustrate in clear terms to the judge exactly what happened. And of course, once you've undouble nickeled it, you just pass it over to the judge and say, take a look and tell me if you think it looks random or not. And then if they see this half and half mixture, then of course they'll say, you know, your opponent was obviously cheating. And don't feel bad about doing this to someone and it turns out that they just like pile shuffling or whatever. Uh, if it doesn't work out exactly, then, you know, oh well. But if you guys go out there and you see people double nickeling very blatantly in front of you, if they do some pile shuffling as well, then this won't work. But if they're just simply double nickeling in front of you, then I think that we should all use this newfangled technique to get those people removed from the tournament because they are really ruining it for everyone. Well guys, that's the end of our demonstration on mana weaving. Now I have no idea how interested you guys are in learning cheating and how to counteract it. So if you found this video really interesting or something like that, go ahead and hit those like buttons, put some comments to let me know, and that'll, that'll help me decide how much I should be producing these anti-cheating videos. Well, that's about it, and uh, of course, if you want to see more content like this, also hit that subscribe button, make sure it gets to you. I'll see you guys next video.